All this equipment is provided by Brooker and it is really the cutting edge of science. It's one of the best equipped laboratories of its time in the country, maybe even Europe. This is a Brooker D8 Venture diffractometer. This is a real cutting edge piece of instrumentation. We were one of the first universities to buy one of these in the country. There are only a handful and it really is at the cutting edge of science. Now, inside here, we have lots of instrumentation. But in the end of the day, what this does, this just looks at crystals. When you have a crystal, a crystal is a uniform piece of matter. Everything is arranged equally. When you expose that piece of matter to X-ray beams, effectively, they diffract. Okay? So it takes the X-rays and out they pop. Now that pattern tells you the makeup of the solid in that crystal. And you can talk about this for a long, long time, but what it really means is it takes a picture of your molecule, and that is a massively powerful technique. If you know what your molecule looks like, you can look at the chemistry, the way it acts as a drug, what it does in solution, and all sorts of things. And if you get that picture, you have a lot of information about that molecule, and that's very, very important to us. And here you can see the results of your experiment. If you imagine in the machine, your crystal is about here. And the X-rays are coming in and being diffracted. And these bright spots here are where the X-rays are being diffracted to. And their position and their intensity is all very important. But you don't just get one picture, you get many. And we get thousands and thousands of images. And if you can see here, image after image. And what we're doing is we're rotating the crystal, taking a picture, rotating the crystal, and taking the picture, and we're getting this pattern here. And we can have to collect masses of data, but once we've done that, then we can find out what has made these spots. Once you've got the data, you can use that to find out what molecule you've got. And you can see here, we go onto this screen, and we come up with this picture here. And this picture is what we've formed in our crystal, what molecule we've got. And you may be able to see here, we've got a, a europium, which is a lanthanide, a heavy metal, and another europium here. And we've got two silver atoms. And from our crystal, we can work out the arrangement of atoms, the number of bonds, and what they're bonded to. And this is when scientists get very excited when you get something like this, because nobody has seen this before. And this is about, I'm about the third person in the world that has seen this, nobody else. The other machine before was a crystal diffractometer. And that gives us a lot of information, but you've got to grow the crystals, and that can be tough. This is a powder diffractometer, so you don't need that crystalline sample, because a lot of things don't form crystals, a lot of new materials don't. But this gives us a diffraction pattern of a powder, and from that powder, again, we can backtrack and work out the molecular structure, how the atoms are arranged. So what we do is we put our powder onto this sample holder, not like the other machine where we use a little crystal on a pin. We pop it in here, and again, it just goes into the machine like so. We have so many auto samplers, so we can run lots and lots of samples, and each of those samples we can learn about the molecular structure. This is the diffraction pattern that we get from that sample that I've just shown you. And you can see here, you've got peaks of different size in different spaces apart. And the spacing and the size of the peaks is all fundamental to its molecular structure. And you can work out from these where the atoms are arranged, in what position, in what order, just by analyzing all that data. This is a unique and very expensive machine. And it's the small angle X-ray. And again, just like all the instruments, it measures a diffraction of X-rays. This does exactly the same thing. But you're looking now not at just molecular order, how your atoms are arranged, but how your molecules are arranged over a long range rather than a very small range. And so you can look at materials over sort of a bigger area. This might be important if you're designing a drug, let's say, that dissolves faster in the body. How all those molecules rearrange might make a big difference to how long it takes before your headache pill works. And so using this, we can work that out. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.